Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Impact Events Podcast, Season 2, Episode 10. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the four main reactions to self-defense situations, fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. We, we had said that we were going to do this, come back and said this would be a really good episode all into itself. Mm-hmm. So we decided that we are going to make it. We're right all now. in. <laughs> We're all in. Is that We're what you're all saying? in. Yep, okay. that's what I said. So for the sponsor for this episode is Atomic Bear. They make our absolute favorite, without a doubt, tactical pen, the mm-hmm. Stealth Pen Pro. And uh, we absolutely love those. We just found out they're coming out in some different colors now. There's like four other colors. Which is really cool. No, it's yeah. not just plain black. I, I like just plain black. But that's a sign from the point. Uh, if you'd like, you know, pink pens or some other ones i think there's some fde and there's uh you know there's just a few other things out there uh so i can't remember which they are now i think there's a blue one maybe a green one huh. so i'm sure that we will get our hands on those probably yeah <laughs> anyway you guys check them out be sure to use the coupon code impact defense that will get you 20 percent off of anything that they have but especially those new tactical pins mm-hmm. okay so like we said before there are four basic ways that people react to any type of uh, sudden violence or stress or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it is fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. So everybody here is fight, flight, freeze. Uh, But really the fawning really is and does deserve to be in that fourth spot there because there are things like that. People have natural kind of inclinations to do that, but you can with training work past those, use the best things that whatever you've got naturally, and then work past those uh, to to become better and be able to kind of make the switch in anything. Because mm-hmm. depending on the situation, you, you have no other idea. Like one situation you might could phone your way out of it, but the next one you might have to fight your way out of it. Or the next one you might just have to run. I've Freezing always- is very, very rarely the best thing to do. Yeah. Right. I've always thought that fawn was just like a, I don't know, is it like a baby deer or something? Yes. <laughs> I just yeah. always thought that that was just what that word was for. And then now we're doing the podcast and now he says phone. And I'm like, what? No, not phone. That's what you're looking at oh, for your notes. Fawn. Whatever. <laughs> Let's start at the beginning. Fight. All right. So, you know, if you have that natural fight reaction, then what we're going to have or what you're going to experience is this surge of adrenaline. So you get this surge of adrenaline, that emotion, and you're just like getting all angry. And, you know, usually people like this refer to as hotheads. <laughs> you know, they, they don't know when to shut up. Um, you know, and they, a lot of times, instead of de-escalating a situation, they will escalated. escalate that yeah. situation. Now, it can be good because in certain situations, that is the right thing to do. You need to make things go forward. You know, push things forward and everything else. But yeah. it's not always the right. But none of these are always the right situation. You know, right, right. thing, right reaction. Right. Um, so basically, one of the things that stress training will help with this is it will help you kind of control your aggression. And also your decision making in that moment. Mm. And that's kind of what we're looking for. We want to make the correct decisions and react the same way. But, you know, that one's, I think, fairly self-explanatory. Yeah. Stress situation hits, you want to fight. Yeah. Okay. I think it would be fun uh, at the end of this also to kind of discuss where what we think we are naturally, most naturally. Gotcha. And everything. All right. Uh, So moving on. Second one would be flight. So we have fight and flight. So flight obviously is going to be that instinct to run and get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. It's just to kind of <laughs> save your butt and get out of a threatening situation Which, in any way possible. you know, it's kind of what we aim for in self-defense. Yeah. Well, we're trying to, to run away. We do something and then run away to a safe place. Right. But if you make that decision at the wrong time, sure. you could be in a bad situation. You know, mm-hmm. you might want to think about maybe not just running away at the very first part of it. Because mm-hmm. running away at the very first sometimes may not be the right answer. Again, right. it's making the, t- the correct tactical decision. Mm-hmm. That is kind of, we need, we need to make sure that we are thinking things through. 
So like, I guess like a positive thing to this would be it's getting your butt out of danger as fast as possible. Yeah. The downside though is what if you have somebody else with you that you are responsible for? Mm. Or that you just want to make sure that they get out, but you're, you just run and then you forget in that <laughs> moment because of you know, panic and everything and else panic. hits and that instinct hits and you just kind of like bolt. And then all of a sudden now you've left people that you care about to deal with whatever situation. And that's not, you know, right. and it's that, not, that wouldn't be the best the thing. So the thing that we go back to there would be like some type of stress training, mm-hmm. you know, I, we're, you're going to hear that every one of these because normal self-defense training does not cover a lot of stress training, right. but that stress training is going to help you tremendously uh, to know how, number one, you deal with these things. And number two, to, you know, deal with them and make better decisions when you need to deal with them. So in a situation where, you know, we might be in a bad situation, let's say I was naturally inclined to run and I, <laughs> boom, I run out the door and I leave you, my daughter there, uh, that would not be good. But if I can think, okay, well, my best decision in this situation is to, get you to a safe spot and get you to run and then I can run. You know, mm-hmm. it's making these smart tactical decisions first. Right. And then letting our instincts take over if need be or going against them. So anyway, third one would be freeze. Which is the thing that we never really want to get in. Yeah, pretty much. I guess the only time it would be best is if you are in a you happen to already be in a safe place. Yeah. Behind cover. If it's after the fact a little. Or, I mean, not even after the fact, but let's say you're kind of, kind of just happen to be hidden. You're behind cover, you know, and then you freeze. It might be the best thing for you, actually, in that situation mm-hmm. to just kind of stay hidden, you know. So that, that may not be horrible. I think it's probably the worst one out of the four. Yeah. Probably. But not, but it, you know, if the situations are right, it can be the right response as well. Um, So you hear about active shooter situations and people freeze and they kind of just drop and freeze and Mm. then they just become uh, sitting targets. Right. You know, and we don't want that. So that's, that's not a good situation in, in something like that. Unless, like I said, you're already hidden or behind cover. So you need to maybe run in a situation like that. You know, we go, we go back to scenario based training, these mm-hmm. stress building situations. It's going to help somebody like that to build resilience. Yeah. Resilience has been a really, really big thing for me. Uh, really this year and, and even, you know, going into last year, because I think that if we can get people to, especially kids, we work with kids a lot. Mm-hmm. If we can get kids to be more resilient in life, man, they are going to rule this world. Yeah. Uh, because I don't think there's nearly as much resilience in our younger generations. Right. And that's something that we want to build. We want people to, to be able to stand up and everything. And, and in situations like this, you know, people have this natural inclination to freeze. If we build the resilience that it takes to kind of act in mm-hmm. some way, then mm-hmm. most of the time action is going to be better than non-action. So our last one is fawn. Or how did you say it earlier? Phone. Yeah. <laughs> so phone, the, the phone is more of a response where you kind of um, – maybe sometimes give in a little bit, but, but phone also kind of works in that whole de-escalation mode. Yeah. So, you know, phone is actually not terrible. I think, I think a lot of people look at it and go like, Oh, that's people that's just going to go along with them. And there is bad situations. We talked about when we were doing, um, our training for abduction prevention instructors, Mm -hmm. instructors, you know, some situations were like kids would freeze and then somebody would grab them and they would just walk off with them. So you kind of right. have a freeze and phone response in that respect or, you know, anything like that, because they, they just want to try to make that other person happy. But there is the, also the whole situation is like, oh, if you come up and put a gun in my face and they say, give me your wallet and your keys and I hand over my wallet and my keys, isn't that basically considering phone? Yeah. As a phone response. Yes. But is that the right thing to do in that situation? If you come up and we're, or, or we'll reverse the roles. Uh, you're in a parking lot and you park your car 
and I come up and I'm like super mad and I come around and I start yelling at you. How dare you? You know, you parked too close to my vehicle. You took my spot, you know, whatever it might be. You know, I'm just, ah, okay. And you go into de-escalation mode mm-hmm. and you're, you have your hands up and you're looking at me and you're like, Hey sir. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm very sorry. You know, I didn't realize that you were waiting on this spot. Uh, I will jump back in my vehicle and I'll move so you can have this spot. You know, is that, is that okay? You know, isn't that fawning? Yeah. Yeah. But would that be the right situation that, or the right response to that situation? Yes. Absolutely. So the, and that's why I say fawning is not the worst of the four. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, because actually there's the escalation skills and just uh, dealing with a situation where we hand over our wallet and keys or whatever. That's the best thing because it's protecting my life. It might be protecting the lives or whoever's with you. You Mm -hmm. know, if somebody comes up and sticks a gun in my face and says, hey, um, you know, give me your wallet and your keys. Well, you're with me, then I'm protecting you by giving them my wallet and keys. So, yeah, yeah you know, that's really the best, but it's not always the best response either mm-hmm. because if they come up and they put a gun to my head or cut a knife to my throat or whatever and say, get in the van, at that point in time, that's not the best response. Right. You know, and I think that's the whole thing. We got we to gotta be educated. We got to know, and we have to uh, train and, and train for the pressure and train for the stress because we have no earthly idea how we're going to react in that situation. Mm-hmm. All that being said, it is very, very important to actually stress train. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Scenario-based training, that's something you can bring up. Uh, and just, you know, doing things that scare you. And a lot of the stress training can actually build you up as a person. I mean, oh, absolutely. it can help with whenever we're doing scenario drills mm-hmm. and everything and uh just doing generally just doing things that will scare you. Oh yeah. And just do those things. Yeah. Yeah, we've talked about that before. Um you know, I'm not the biggest fan of heights, but we've done indoor rock climbing. Yeah. Um you know, uh I'm trying to think you don't like mud, but we've done these uh, <laughs> these muddy 5Ks, you know. We do, yeah. you know, do things that are hard. We do things to step out of our comfort zones to uh, build us up as a person. Yep. I mean, you still, even though you kind of got off the circuit and you don't compete, you still compete once mm-hmm. a year, really, at one tournament, yeah. just to kind of keep yourself outside of your comfort zone. Because yeah. really, that stopped being your comfort zone. And mm-hmm. the stress and everything started to get to you and everything. That was part of the reason you quit. And I think you just kind of lost interest in some things. But still putting yourself under that stress of going out and competing and being judged and everything mm-hmm. is still something that kind of pushes you outside of that comfort zone that really helps you as an individual and in kind of building that resilience and everything mm-hmm. that like we talked about. And a lot of times I, I, I hold myself up to like a certain standard. And if mm. I don't meet that standard, then I feel bad. <laughs> Man, I wish I knew where you got that from. Um, <laughs> totally did not get that from my father. <laughs> no, but yeah, I, and that's that's another thing, you know, kind of performing to the level. And we discussed that uh, was a few weeks back when mm-hmm. we had Tim on the podcast after we went up there and trained with him. Yeah. You know, um, I tried my best. Just kind of speaking of that for a moment, we went up there to that room clearing class, and I tried my best to make sure that I had – I had a realistic idea of what I was going into. Mm-hmm. I'd never done room clearing before. This was the first time I've done room clearing stuff. So kind of getting into uh, a room clearing class and kind of doing what I knew was going to be force on force. I knew I was going to have ups and downs. Right. You know, I knew I would be on the losing time, uh, losing team at times. Mm-hmm. I understood that. The whole goal was that, you know, I wanted to have a kind of a real realistic level of performance Mm -hmm. and i did that pretty well because i walked in going like yeah i won some i lost some blah blah blah. it's probably about 50 50 by the time the the day was over and uh, that under the circumstances i'm not doing anything like that before yeah i'm pretty happy with that it's a little different for me because in some situations like tournaments i have a standard because i've done that i've done tournaments before so i have a standard to myself and it's like a kind of a pride thing Yes, you know. yes, but as people continue to compete and practice and drill and everything, and you say, oh, I'm going to do a tournament. Let me practice for three days <laughs> and go up against all of these people who that's all they do is train to do this. You have to ha- set a realistic standard, <laughs> okay? 
It's either train more or expect not to do all that well. Yeah. I say that, but she actually trained three days and she did rather very well, actually. <laughs> but it's like with the with the whole pistol stuff with Tim that we went through, I was expecting like a whole lot worse. But, you know, whenever I first went in there, I thought there was going to be more girls, but it was just me and Jada, you know. Oh. So then my expectations for everything went way down and there was a whole lot of people in there. And also, whenever it came to the shooting, I had to shoot twice. So automatically, I thought, oh, no, I failed. <laughs> so <laughs> there's like some things where it's just like I hold myself up to a standard than some things where I'm just like expecting the worst. Yeah. No matter what, you want to put yourself in these types of situations. Uh, put yourself in some situations that are safe, but that will stress you out because it will help you to mitigate that fight, flight, freeze, or fall in response. Because once you understand that you can control how you feel and your stress initial reactions, and you can work through it, then you can do so much more than most people think you can do. And that's kind of the idea, even when we're doing stuff like, hey, you're going to go take a pistol class and it's going to make you really nervous. Or, hey, you're going to go and compete for a weekend. Uh, or, you know, whatever. Hey, I'm going to go into a rock climbing and be scared as I'm like, <laughs> you know, 20 feet up in the air or something like that. But it, at any rate, uh, the big deal is that we make sure that we are doing things that kind of push us, mm -hmm. keep us uncomfortable. Because the more that you do things that can push you and keep you yourself uncomfortable, the better you are equipped to deal against your natural inclinations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's amazing how that kind of stuff bleeds over. All right. If you enjoyed this podcast, go ahead and like, subscribe, and click that bell notification. That way you get notified anytime we put out a new video or a podcast. Don't forget to go over to theatomicbear.com. Check out their tactical pins and other stuff that they have over there. And be sure to use the coupon code Impact Defense. Gets you 20% off again. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next episode. See you guys.